In this lesson I'm going to talk about the color bar. This is these colors and some of these tools here on the right hand side. These four row of colors which are very handy to have like this because you can access a lot of colors without having to load in extra charts or color palettes etc. Now to demonstrate how this works a little bit better I'll just draw out a, I'll come over and click on this and I'll draw out an arrow like this which is currently black and if I go across here you can see in the flyout here, or in the hint, it tells me what sort of colours these are. Okay, so I'll make this green, I'll make it blue, I'll make it red, whatever colour, blue's fine. So here we've got our standard colours, run-of-the-mill type colours. Down here is our current colour palette, and up here are some fill controls. We'll start up here because we might as well start at the top. Now, this is the current fill, sky blue, as you can see. I can put that colour into the... Uh, the color buffer here or the fill buffer and then I can use this to apply this color to another object so if I select this piece of text here you can see if I click on that fill color there the reserve fill or the fill buffer it applies it to this text here so I can get the color of this object to the color of this object by just using these tools here if I make this red and send it over to the uh, buffer I can click on that and make that red as well so if I've got a special color I've created, or a spot color for example, which I can do from over here by creating a spot color, I can actually apply this to other objects very simply. So that's a great way, or a very easy way of getting colors across um, from one object to another. Another thing we've got over here is this wireframe fill. So if I click on that, that puts it into wireframe just for the selected object. This has its own lesson, so I won't go into great details with that. Uh, same with reserve fill, uh, reverse fill, it has its own lesson as well. So uh, there's not much point going into that into great detail at this point. What this tool here, or this button here does, no fill, if I click on that you can see that we've still got an arrow, like if I go into wireframe mode, we can still see our arrow in wireframe, but it has no fill now. So if I right click on any of these colours here I will apply that as a pen style. And as you can see it's, it comes in as hairline. So if I click on this pen fly out here and go to pen width here, and come down and say make it thick, you can see that I've applied this pen style even though this object has no fill, I can see it's pen style. If I give it a, a fill back again, you can see that it just automatically fills up that object. So to change the pen style, you can right click on an object to change its color, and you can use any of these, these colors here to fill the object. These other uh, uh, things here, the registration color and the uh, contour cut color and the underbase color, again these are advanced concepts, they have their own lessons and you can watch those when, you're, uh, when you have time or you're interested in learning about those things. We'll just keep going on here, we'll, we'll talk about this color palette uh, here, this, this color chart. If I create some other objects, I'll create a square and I'll create another arrow here and I'll make say that, um, this, oh, I'll make it this color here. If I come down here and I look at my colors in use, display document colors, I click on that, you can see it's showing me the colors that are currently in use in the document as here. So that's a handy thing if you just want to know, if you're working on a page full of colors and you want to know what those colors are, you can come here and click on this and on this tool down here and you'll see the colors populated in this list. I'll turn that off, we just get our default color palette. Now this default color palette as you can see has got its particular names here, pale, violet, red, etc. If I want to change this to say a vinyl colour chart, I come down to here and I click on my colour library. Okay, I can click on that and it brings up this window here and you can see that at the moment we're looking at our default colour chart. I might want to make it, uh, we'll select 3M here and the Scotch Cow list here. I click accept. You can see that this colour chart is now populated with the Scotch Cow colours and if I hover over these colours I can see that that's uh, the 3M Scotch Cow, uh, Scotch Cow and it's Cardinal Red. Um, and uh, apple green etc etc and I can make that that apple green color and that's a great way of changing these charts you can change them in here and to bring them back you can either click on this button here or you can come on to the fill fly out color libraries here click on it there and we'll just come to the chart you currently have selected go back to our default click accept now I've done that because I want to show you some other tools here the default color chart actually I'll bring it back up I'll just show you how long it is as you can see there's a lot of color palettes here or color swatches, lots and lots. So I click accept. I've now got my default color palette here. If I want to scroll through this, you see this button here? You click on that and it just scrolls through. So I've got instant access, and there's the top one to bring it back up to the top. I've got instant access to any of these colors in this color palette here. 
which is a very good thing to be able to, uh, to access and be able to apply any of these colors to the objects I have selected. So that's how that, that part of it works. Now if I look at this color here, I'll make this say a blue color. Along here are some very powerful tools. This is a darkening tool, so this darkens the color and this one on the left of it lightens the color. So that's that's a very handy way of quickly changing the color without having to bring up color mixing, color, uh, you know, the, the color mixer, etc. You don't have to do that. You can just use this to darken and lighten quickly. Here on this left hand button here, it's the hue to the left hand side of the color wheel and hue to the right hand side of the color wheel. So if I click on that, you can see how it scrolls through the hue. If I click on the other way, it scrolls it back through and you can see how it updates those colors like that. So these two tools here are interactive and dynamic and depending on what color you've got selected will scroll through the hue or lighten or darken the actual color of the object of the fill. Now if I click off this, so I've got nothing selected and I'm in object mode, I can come down here and I can actually set my default, uh, my default current fill and my default pen style fill. So if I say red, you can see that that red swatch comes in and if I say I make this blue, so I've got a default red fill and a default blue pen style. So if I come over here and say draw a new arrow here like this, you'll see it will come in as red because that's my default fill style. And if I come to the pen fly out and I make that thick, you can see that my default pen is also blue because that's what I've set it to. That's a, a good way of, if you're creating a lot of objects that are always, you always want them to be the same color or the same pen style, you can actually set the default colors here and that's a great way of doing that. To set them back I simply uh, click off everything and be in object mode, set my default fill to say black and I right click on this no fill button to, to empty out the pen style fill so I don't have an automatic pen style being applied. So these are the sort of tools and controls you have here with, this, uh, with the default pen and fill. And that's how the color bar generally works on this right hand side here. Powerful tool and uh, you should experiment with it and try it out. You'll find that uh, uh, setting colors is very easy and as far as learning about how all these uh, other color uh, modes and fills work, they all have their separate lesson which you can come and watch when you're ready. And that's the end of this lesson.